Greetings, Earthlings. As per my last deck tech video, I went into detail about my banding deck built around Odric. Unfortunately, I could only give a surface level explanation of banding, as I figured the deeper dive would require its own video. So here we are. Welcome to banding. As previously mentioned, banding was a keyword ability introduced all the way back in alpha and hasn't, nor is it likely, that it will ever see a reprint since Weather Light in 97. Due to the powers that be, there exists what is known as the Storm Scale. Now the Storm Scale is a ranking of the likelihood that a given mechanic will be reprinted in any future standard legal set. Mechanics are ranked from 1, which is very likely, to 10, which is very unlikely. The scale is created by uh, Mark Rosewater as his assessment and is not an official policy or guarantee, but it's a pretty good, uh, it's a pretty good scale to set things on. On this scale, you have mechanics like flying and artifact creatures that sit at one, so they are mechanics that we will definitely see again, and banding sits at ten. So never say never, but this will require a major miracle. <laughs> Bands with other sits at 11, which is a definite never, which I'm not sad about because it's a lot more limited. What makes the ability better than people give it credit for is all the intricate ways it interacts with combat. Any amount of creatures with banding and one creature without may form a band when attacking. And that's not even including cards that actively give your creatures banding or bands with other. The only real concern is that if you attack with a band, and one of the creatures in said band has flying or protection from creatures, they can still be blocked as part of the band. Just with how the pull blocking process works. Now, let's clarify the effects and synergies that apply to banding also apply to bands with other. The main difference is just how the band can be formed. A creature with banding can form a band by itself. Whilst a creature with bands with other must have another creature to band with, and they have to meet the criteria. Like some cards are like banned with legends or banned with etc etc. So that's where that sits. To put it a bit simpler, a creature with banding can be a solo act, similar to artists like Charlie Puth or Buckethead. Whereas bands with other requires others to be present to be able to band with, so two or more must be a part of the band to make it work, similar to Nirvana or Slipknot if you have that much going on. Where are we going with this? Oh yeah, combat interactions. <laughs> I know, this, this doesn't sound like a strong start, just bear with me here. Now diving a bit deeper, let's talk about how banding works when attacking. So as previously mentioned, any amount of creatures with banding slash bands with other, and one creature without banding may form a band. If all your creatures have banding, then those are who can make the band. You can choose to not create a band when attacking if you don't want all of your creatures attacking the same opponent, or you want to leave back blockers. Now, when attacking as a band, each creature in the band has to attack the same target, be it a player, planeswalker, or battle. Keep in mind, this is only doable during the declare attacker step. When blockers are declared, you decide how said blockers assign damage. You don't design how you don't decide how they block, you just assign the damage. So if you attack with a band that is a 1-1 and a 5-5, and your opponent blocks your 1-1 with a 4-4, you can have all four of that damage be assigned to the 5-5, and then both creatures would deal damage simultaneously. Unless you have a creature with first strike or double strike, in which case it would still follow the rules of the damage step. And you can assign damage however you want. It doesn't have to all be a damaged... A damaged? Wow. It doesn't all have to be assigned to one creature. You could even attack with two... You could be attacking with two three threes and the opponent blocks with a four four. You can assign two damage to one creature and two damage to the other so neither die. Trample works similarly to normal, but if you have a creature with trample in your band, you can assign enough damage amongst your other creatures to deal lethal damage to the blocking creatures, then you can bypass the blockers altogether and deal damage directly to the opponent with the trampling creatures. If your opponent has a creature that can block at least one of your creatures in a band, as I mentioned before, then it can block the whole band, regardless of abilities. When it comes to blocking, just like regular combat, you can block with as many creatures as you want. However, forming a band 
requires only that you have one creature with banding as opposed to multiples. So you can create a blocking band with one creature with banding and as many creatures without it as possible. They just all have to be blocking the same creature. And just like with attacking, you decide how the damage is assigned and where. Which goes insanely well with how the game's rules are with blocking and banding. Because you are deciding where the damage is being assigned. So you can blunt trample damage all together and force them to assign it all to your blocking banded creatures. Some other niche rulings of all things like if a creature loses banding mid combat to an effect like sudden spoiling, nothing happens as the band is already formed. If, in combat, you're against another field with banding, they would both take effect. So the blocker would assign the attacker's damage and the attacker would assign the blocker's damage. It would kind of work ass backwards to regular combat. Another thing that makes the ability sort of broken is if you run Pillow 4 type effects like Maze of Ith or color protection effects like God's Willing, you can abuse the fact that you can redirect damage. Redirecting all damage to one creature and either giving it protection or mazing it out of harm's way means you can basically taunt your opponent's entire field with one creature while the rest dogpile onto them. When redirecting damage, the sky's the limit on what you can do with it. Because so long as you have the tools to do it, you can make it so no one ever damages you or your creatures in combat. You can also abuse abilities like regeneration and indestructible for that reason as well. Obviously it's a little linear, linear due to there being more interactions than just combat damage, but I digress. To wrap this all up, banding is a really fun ability when you realize how you can abuse it. The fact that it's such an old and forgotten ability is what makes it so fun and underrated as it just flies under the radar most of the time. I'll leave a link to my Odric deck tech video that I built around banding in the description if you want to check that out. And you know, if you want if you want your friends to understand banding as well, point them in this direction because like, it took me a good bit to understand how the mechanic works. It's one of those things where I could blab about it all day long but you may not understand it until you actually play with it. So, like, build a banning deck for yourself. Most of the cards are insanely cheap because of just how forgotten the ability is. So I encourage you to build a banning deck, try it out for yourself, try out the mechanics, try out the interactions, and have fun with it, because I, I think it's really fun and hilarious to throw a banning deck at your friends and them going, what the hell did you just subject me to? <laughs> so, without further ado... I bid thee farewell.